dear students in this session we will derive classical aggregate demand curve classical aggregate demand curve as we have discussed in the context of classical theory of employment and output determination we have derived a classical aggregate supply curve as vertical that is fixed at a full employment level fixed at a full employment level now we introduce classical aggregate demand curve and combining these two we will get information about price level in the economy now the classical theory of money is in fact an implicit theory of aggregate demand is an implicit theory of aggregate demand for output in the classical system so we can use the quantity theory of money to construct a classical aggregate demand curve to make our analysis concrete we assign values to the variable symbols let k is equal to 1 by 4 so that v is equal to 4 and also assume that initially money supply is equal to 300 300 a uh, billion dollars million dollars what about this now in order for either equation m into v bar is equal to p into y bar or uh, m s is equal to k p y where k and p y are constants p y must be equal to p into y must be equal to 1200 m into v is equal to 1200 so py will be equal to 1200 now this is given in the figure where we take y here p here y and p so we take aggregate price level on the vertical axis and the real output on the horizontal axis and consider ad ad1 300 shows various combinations of p and y where py is equal to 1200 now points on this ad1 maybe um a high p a low y a low p or high y etc anyway the point is this along this ad1 p into y is always equal to 1200 for example uh, it may be a combination of 300 into 4 or 600 into 2 whatever 300 into 4 into 300 or 2 into 2 into 600 like that now suppose that money supply increases to 400 for either this or this equation to be satisfied py must be equal to 1600 This is shown by another aggregate demand schedule AD2 with the 400 combinations with the different combinations of P and Y different combinations of P and Y so as you can see if there is an increase in the supply of money aggregate demand curve will shift towards the right one aggregate demand curve is drawn for a particular level of money supply as money supply increases 
aggregate demand curve shifts upwards, shifts towards the right. So for a given money supply, we trace out a downward sloping aggregate demand curve. And uh, this, this downward sloping aggregate demand curve can be combined with the, the vertical aggregate supply curve to explain price determination in the to explain price determination in the classical model. We have aggregate supply here. For a given money stock, aggregate demand for M money supply is equal to M1. P is P1. If money supply increases AD, M2 price is P2. If money supply again increases AD, M3 price is P3, like this. And aggregate supply is fixed at a full employment level as we have derived earlier from the supply side. Combined with this, we introduce various aggregate demand curves associated with the different values of the money supply. And you will see that if money supply increases, aggregate demand curve shifts towards the right. And you can see that only prices will increase, output will remain constant. Now, a classical theory of aggregate demand is an implicit theory. The theory is not explicit in the sense that it focuses on components of aggregate demand and explain the factors determine it. It is not explicit because it will not explain the factors or the components of aggregate demand. In the Keynesian theory, as we have seen, aggregate demand is explicit because Keynes or Keynesian theory focuses attention on the factors determining the components or the components determining aggregate demand. So classical theory of aggregate demand is implicit as it will not focus attention on the components of aggregate demand. And this is a point to be remembered. So, so in the classical system, as aggregate supply is fixed at full employment, aggregate demand derived from the quantity theory, its position is determined by the supply of money, determines price level. While discussing the classical theory of income and output determination, we have seen that if uh, there is a change in the price level, the level of employment of labor will not affect, will not be affected. It will remain constant. As such, output will also remain constant. The only thing that increases is P, P1, 2P1, 3P1, etc. So P2 is 2P1, P3 is uh, 2P2, 3P2, sorry, 3P1, like that. So this is the classical system of employment and output determination on the one hand and price level on the other hand. In the subsequent classes, we will explain the, the role of interest rate in the classical model to ensure that aggregate supply is always equal to aggregate demand. We will also discuss the effect of government policies, monetary and fiscal policies on the equilibrium values of real and nominal variables in the classical system in the future classes.